Katie Gracie. A midfielder from Van Bay, Connecticut, Caitlin Contreras. An attack from Peabody, Massachusetts, Colleen Crotty. A goalkeeper from Nolan, Connecticut, Molly Bressenhand. And a graduate student attack from North Massapequa, New York, Alexa Rigian. Congratulations and the best of luck in your future endeavors. At this time, we would like to recognize the senior members of the Women's Lacrosse Team Class of 2024. Our first senior is a three-year captain and a fifth year who will be graduating from Keene State with a degree in art and design. Number five from Brewster, New York, Haley Rodderjack. Haley has played and started in 56 games over her five seasons for the Owls. Across her collegiate career, she has accumulated 250 career points, which is tied to the third most in Keene State women's lacrosse program history. In the Owls' last game against Rhode Island College, Rodderjack also set the program record for career goals when she scored number 203 of her career. She also holds the program record for cost turnovers with 204. Haley also tallied 47 assists and 167 draw control wins. Rodderjack has been named to the first team all Little East for the previous three years. The LEC Rookie of the Year in 2021, LEC Midfielder of the Year in 2021 and 2022, and to the IWLCA All-Region Second Team for the previous two seasons. Haley is joined today by her mom, Carrie, her dad, Bill, and her grandma, Karen. On the what? Our next senior is a four-year member of the program and will be graduating from Keene State with a degree in safety and occupational health applied sciences with a minor in environmental studies and construction safety sciences. Number six from Sutton, New Hampshire, Alexis Philides. Alexis has played in 45 games, making 42 starts in her four years as an owl. Across her collegiate career, she has recorded a goal and a pair of assists. Alexis has been a big part of the owl's defense as she has caused 36 turnovers, collected 56 ground balls, and won the draw control 10 times across her collegiate career. Off the field, Philides has been named a member of the LEC Academic Honor Roll, along with being named to the LEC Sportsmanship Team for 2023. Alexis is joined today by her mom, Ellie, her dad, Chris, her sister, Devin, her brother, Zach, and her boyfriend, Mitch. Yeah. Next is another fifth year and also two-time captain of the program who will be graduating from Keene State with a degree in public health and biology. Number nine from St. Albans, Vermont, Mindy St. Marie. Mindy has played in 59 games, making 55 starts over her five seasons with the Owls. Mindy ranks in the top 20 in program history for both points and goals, as she has recorded 130 career points and 102 career goals, to go with her 28 assists for Keene State. Her 187 career draw control wins are tied for the third most in program history, while her 24 free position goals are tied for seventh most in program history. Mindy has been named to the IWLCA Division III Defensive Player of the Week in 2023, the LEC Defensive Player of the Week twice, selected to the All Little League second team, and has been a member of the LEC Academic Honor Roll. Mindy is joined today by her mom, Tammy, and her dad, Steve. Our next senior is a captain, a four-year member of the program, and will be graduating from Keene State with a degree in elementary ed and sociology. Number 10 from Charleston, Rhode Island, Ellie Lyons. Ellie has played in 54 games, making 45 starts over her four years with the Owls. She has been a huge part of the Owls' success on defense over her time at Keene State, as she has caused 69 turnovers and collected 95 ground balls. Off the field, Lyons has been named to the All Little East first team in 2023, a member of the LEC Academic Honor Roll, and was named to the Little East Sportsmanship Team in 2022. Ellie is joined today by her mom, Tammy, and her dad, Patrick. program and will be graduating from Keene State with a degree in business management with a specialization in human resources. Number 19 from Manchester, Vermont, Hannah Dworkin. 
Kenna has played in 49 games, making 33 strikes over her four years with the Owls. She currently ranks third in program history with 85 career assists, and her 44 assists in 2022 are the fifth most in a single season by an Owl. Dworkin has been named to the All Little League second team for the previous two seasons, and she has also been named to the LEC Academic Honor Roll. Hannah is joined today by her mom, Karen, and her dad, Adam. Let's have one more round of applause for the senior members of the Women's Across Team Class of 2024. Now let's meet the starting lineups. First for the, for the Wolves of Western Connecticut State University. A senior midfielder from Bethel, Connecticut, number two, Vicki Gracie. A senior midfielder from Danbury, Connecticut, number three, Caitlin Contreras. A freshman defender from White Plains, New York, number four, Annalise Reggio. A sophomore attack from Ridge, New York, number nine, Madison Radford. A sophomore midfielder from Centerport, New York, number 10, Faye Young. A senior attack from Peabody, Massachusetts, number 12, Colleen Karate. A freshman defender from Neston Set, New York, number 19, Caitlin Bias. A sophomore defender from Putnam Valley, New York, number 22, Natalie Mazza. A freshman attack from East Meadow, New York, number 23, Isabella Toda. A sophomore defender from Melville, New York, number 29, Grace Smalley. A graduate student attack from North Massapequa, New York, number 33, Alexa Reggio. A senior goalkeeper from Noah, Connecticut, number 99, Molly Bressingham. The Wolves are coached by Rachel Griffith in her first season. She is assisted by Michaela Ramos and Alexis Johnson. And now, the starting lineup for your all of the King State College. A junior attack from West Hartford, Connecticut, number 2, Lola Smith. A fifth year midfielder from Brewster, New York, number 5, Haley Radiger. A senior midfielder from Southern New Hampshire, number six, Alexis Fility. A junior midfielder from Laconia, New Hampshire, number seven, Amethyst Phelps. A sophomore defender from Colchester, Connecticut, number eight, Peyton Gonzalez. A fifth year midfielder from St. Albans, Vermont, number nine, Mindy St. Marie. A senior defender from Charleston, Rhode Island, number 10, Ellie Lyons. A sophomore midfielder from Londonderry, New Hampshire, number 12, Tess Brown. A junior attack from West Hartford, Connecticut, number 16, Chase Jingress. A sophomore midfielder from Salem, New Hampshire, number 17, Riley Devine. A senior attack from Manchester, Vermont, number 19, Hannah Dworkin. And a sophomore goalkeeper from Belton Massachusetts, number 30, Mabel Bissett. The Owls are coached by Travis Wyant in his second season. He's assisted by Emma Crowley, Faye Brown, as well as senior manager and senior Amelia Rowe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, at this time we ask you to please rise and able and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. So when I ask students why Keene State, the students say unanimously it's the sense of community. The feel when you walk on this campus is immediately a sense of belonging a sense of safety, a sense of welcome, and a sense of opportunity and promise. And so I think our students feel that when they come to our campus and they experience it when they join us. Why students choose this campus is the sense and feel and also the opportunity and the promise of that opportunity for them when they're making the decision. And why they stay is that we deliver on that promise. We have students from urban environments, from rural environments, and when they come to Keene State in those first weeks of forming a new community, they bring all of those experiences together to create a better Keene State. It's a campus small enough 
to feel a sense of recognition and identity, and a campus big enough to feel part of something bigger than yourself. This isn't a passive experience, so please get engaged, find a club, make a new group of friends, get involved in a recreational sport activity, in an intramural sport, get involved in a creative performance, go see a show, be a part of this community and squeeze everything you can out of Keene State. And if you do that, I know, I am confident you will have an exceptional experience and your life will be changed as a result of it. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Good afternoon, lacrosse fans, and welcome to the Owl Athletic Complex on the campus of Keene State College. Today we bring you a matchup between the Keene State Owls and the Western Connecticut Wolves in women's lacrosse action. This is an LEC matchup game, both teams are 2 0 in the conference. The stage is set for a great game as the Keene State Owls, riding high on a three game winning streak, look to pick up another win on their home turf. Their latest win was against Rhode Island College with a score of 18 to 0. Haley Ratterjack broke the Keene State scoring record at this game with 203 goals. The Wolves have a 7-5 record and are coming off a win against Worcester State with a score of 16-13. With both teams having a 2-0 conference record, whoever wins today takes the top spot in the conference. It is sure to be a good game today. Thank you all for streaming on Owls Media Network, and let's get to the game. At the draw, we will have Haley Radajak for the Owls and Isabella Poda for the Wolves. Ball is up. Looks like Mindy St. Marie picks it up pretty quickly there. Mm -hmm. She makes her way down the field. Looks like Tess Brown's going to make her way towards the goal. That's be a ground ball pickup by the Wolves. A great defense by Brown. Knock the ball out. It looks like the Wolves are moving pretty quickly down here. It looks like that was shot by number 10, Bei Zhang. Just went outside the goal there. Looks like the Wolves picked it back up. They're going to have another attempt at it.
looks like the Owls are going to slow things down on offense, take, take some time to really pass the ball around. Looks like Marie is going to make her way towards the goal. A save. There was a foul on the play. It looks like St. Marie is going to get a free position shot. Owl's ball. It's going to be brought down by Rabijack. She passes over to Smith. We've looking for a fast break. Oh, and a whistle's blown. Smith gets a free position shot. going to be Wolves ball now. That was a Wolves goal. That was shot and scored by number two, Vicky Gracie. I think that was their first shot attempt this game. Western Connecticut goal scored by number two, Vicky Gracie. And they made it. Impressive. Looks like it will be Radajack and Poda back at the draw. Ball's up. It's going to be picked up by Poda. Ooh, she falls to the ground. But still gets possession over the ball.
Bailey was knocked out by Tess Brown. She'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she breaks free of those two defenders. It looked like Radajak was going to shoot, but I think she dropped the ball before. Yeah. It's picked up by number 99, Molly Bresnahan. Passing it around. Looks like they're getting ready. Oh, that was shot by number nine, Madison Ratchford. Just went left of the goal there. Shot by number 12, Colleen Crotty. Saves by Owls goalie. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at ncaa.com slash shop. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now, only at ncaa.com slash shop. 
Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. And we're back. And we'll pick up with Owls in possession of the ball. are looking for their opening here, hoping to tie up the game. Mm -hmm. But the Wolves' defense is very good. Mm -hmm. And shot and scored. Looks like that was number 19, Hannah Dworkin. And it makes a score one to one. Number 19, Jenna Dorgan. It'll be Radajak and Poda back at the draw. <laughs> the ball's up. And this is going to be picked up by Radajak. Passing it around. Looks like 
Radijax going towards the goal. Looked like she was going to shoot, but she got the foul there, so she'll pick up a free possession shot. This could put the Owls in the lead. Radijax shoots and scores. That's another goal for the Owls' all-time leading scorer, Haley Radijax. And that makes the score two to one. Owls in the lead. Say goals for by number five, Haley Radijax. Rada Jack and Coda will go back to the draw. And the draw control is picked up by Brown. Shot by Brown. St. Marie going to take a shot at it now, and that'll be a goal for St. Marie. The Owls going three for three. Oh my God! On the last three possessions of the ball. I mean, the first few minutes we had no goals, and in the last minute we've had three. The Owls are on fire. Rada Jack and Poda back at the draw. The ball is up. Picked up by St. Marie. She makes her way down the field. really setting up here, moving the ball around. Oh, like Radijak was getting ready to go in. She'll draw a foul. She'll get the f another free position shot. She'll opt to pass to Brown. Ball's knocked out, but she scooped it up. Like Brown did a behind the back pass there, and her teammates weren't ready for it. Yeah, but they recovered well. And, yeah. and the Wolves will get possession of the ball on an out of bounds call on the Owls. Like, I don't know if that was a shot or if the ball just rolled out of her stick there. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened.
and intercepted by Ratajack. And St. Marie makes her way down the field. That was shot by Dworkin, but saved by Bresnahan. And the whistle is blown. Looks like the Wolves will be taking a free position shot. A little high. That will end the first quarter of the game. The score, Owls 3, Wolves 1. We'll be right back for the next quarter. A single thread is unique. Like each of us full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season. The confetti is going to fall. There she goes, and she's got it. Welcome back to the Owls Media Network. Right now the score is 3-1 to one with the Owls leading. We'll start this quarter with a draw control. It'll be Radjack for the Owls and Poda for the Wolves. Picked up by the Wolves. It's like the ground, wall, ground ball will be picked up by Rudberg. Oh, and the 
was knocked out and picked up by the Wolves. like that was shot by number 23 Isabella Poda that just went left to the goal there looks like she will get a free position shot into shooting she looks to pass Knocked out by Tess Brown. She makes her way down the field. Oh. It's like a foul being called on the Wolves. Brown will regain possession of the ball. Passes it to St. Marie. be Owl's ball. It just rolled right yeah. outside the net there. Not sure where the goalie was. And St. Marie's on point today with her defense. Looks like she was able to knock the ball out there. It's picked up. Tulis will pick it up. She'll pass to Dworkin. Dworkin makes her way down the field. and intended a pass for Jen Grass, but just missed her. The Wolves probably looking to score right now. defense today is a force to be reckoned with. Yep, looks like the Wolves are having a hard time getting around them. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, 
Looks like Brown and Poda just collided there. Shot by number one, Savannah Calm, just went right of the goal there. That was another shot by number nine, Madison Ratchford, went right above the goal. And I think they have. They have one second left on the shot clock. Looks like Ratchford will get a free position shot. She'll score, making the score three to two. Western Connecticut goal scored by number nine, Madison Ratchford. Rata, Jack, and Poda back at the draw. Matchup we are used to. Oh, it'll be Wolves ball. are taking their time, just passing around. And that's another goal for the Wolves. That looks like number three, Caitlin Contreras. That was a good goal. Number three, Caitlin Contreras. Now the score is all tied up three to three. Oh, that's a nice grab by Brown. That was impressive. Looks like she'll get the ball knocked away. Be picked up by the wolves. The whistle's blown. Timeout is called. Timeout, Western Connecticut State University. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team, 
or all of them. It's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Back to Owls Media Network. The score at the timeout tied three to three. You know this is going to be a big game because both are two and zero in the conference. It's like it'll start in possession of the Wolves. set up for a free position shot. It'll be number 33, Alexa Riggio. And a beautiful save by the set. I could not be the goal in this situation. be picked up by the Owls. And she is cruising down that field. That's number 17, Riley Devine. are going to pick up that ground ball.
are passing by the Owls. Looks like the Owls are having a hard time with the Wolves' defense here. Mm -hmm. Brown's going to make her way towards the goal. <laughs> They've got nine seconds left on the shot clock to make something happen here. Oh, yeah, they got to go. Oh. I do not think that's what they wanted to do. That'll be a shot clock violation. The Wolves will gain possession of the ball. I feel like when you have that little time left, just shoot it. Where's that happens? Is it? But it did. Abilities picked up that ground ball and then got knocked over. She ate it, so. St. Marie will bring it down the field now. Test shot up there. Test Brown went just right outside the goal. <laughs> the shot clock is going down, and they don't want to have a repeat of what happened. So they better start shooting. Looks like Brown's going to make another attempt at it. Again, we're under 10 seconds they just on the shot Shoot clock. it. Shoot. Oh my goodness. It's yeah. going to be Lola Smith. Shot from way outside the crease there. That was a beautiful shot. I think that was a Hail Mary shot, and she made it. I think they heard me. <laughs> you know, I think she saw that two seconds left on the shot clock and just threw it up. No, I think she heard me. <laughs> Less than a minute left in the first half. Ryder Jack and Poto will meet for the draw. I mean, they can really just hold the ball because the shot clock is 90 minutes and there's only like 40 seconds left. They could, but I think if they want to extend their lead here, they'll make another attempt. You're right. That was intended to be a pass, but it was picked up by Rose Foley Bresnahan. A long pass. I 
How did Jack pick it up? There's three seconds left in the first half here. I shoot it. Imagine the shot I made it. That was crazy. <laughs> Our score going into halftime, Alice 4, Wolves 3. We'll be right back in the Owls Media Network. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, NCAA.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now, only at NCAA.com slash shop. to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. Turn this music on. We still dance. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. And it's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go into personal trainer and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. We are Keene State. Here, we believe that everyone is welcome and anything is possible. We're empowering your unique voice. Igniting potential and possibility. Look closer. We are a tight-knit community. An inclusive community where people can be their true selves. Bring your ability, background, culture, or traditions Whatever makes you, you. Because Keene State becomes home from day one. Come find your people. And enjoy live music, art, coffee, thrifting, and did we mention the food? And if you're worried about what there is to do on the weekend, just look at this. Everything we do here is about community. Because we're a community of intense learners. With extraordinary hearts that raise each other up. We are fueled by each other's successes. Learning outside the classroom as well as in. And we're here to provide the guidance and support you need. 
succeed. All right, let's get hands on. In the lab. In the studio. In the pool. On the dance floor. On the stage. The choices are yours, the opportunities are here. Here at Keene State College, we're focused on teaching students the skills for an ever-changing world. I'm ready to tackle problems with industry-ready skills. You'll get a resume that writes itself and a paycheck that earns elevated confidence, world-class courage, and we never stop learning. True learning takes collaboration. We explore what drives our passions, celebrate our individual voices, and spark possibility together. Every single student, every single day. You already have what it takes. Welcome to Keene State. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. I worked in HVAC when I was in high school and I really liked being on a job site. When Keene State came to my high school, the admissions counselor told me I could have a job on a job site and also make a difference on people's lives. He said being a safety engineer meant I could work with my hands but also make sure that everybody was going to be home safely at the end of the day. The safety field is growing rapidly because companies are noticing that keeping their workers healthy means that they can keep their workers working. My plan is to graduate from Keene State so I can get back onto a job site as a safety engineer. It's great because there's jobs to choose from all over the United States, so I can basically go anywhere I want. Keene State is giving me the tools to make that happen. We know you will find your community along Appian Way here at Keene State College, over a campfire on the student center lawn, in some friendly games and competition, or in a club you connect to at the student involvement fair. Maybe you will find your people on the courts, in a cheering section in the stands, at the rink on the ice, skating as an owl, or chilling in the yoga studio. Your connections may take place on the quad, listening to music, hanging out with friends, participating in a keen state tradition like Pumpkin Palooza, or working on a group project, studying with classmates. Maybe your talents will bring you together with your community on one of our stages in the main theater or the Recital Hall at the Redfern Arts Center. For us, community is all about the people you meet and the connections you make. At Keene State, our community is really about you. All right, pay attention. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade from foam fingers in the wave to the super secret wave. How's that for a course description? Lesson one, your game starts long before the opening whistle, so arrive prepared. Two, if something piques your interest, raise your hand. And three, work in groups. NCAA championships, attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. It's always been more than just a game. It is a legacy. Support the USA Basketball Foundation as we look to expand that legacy. For her, for them, 
for us. All of us. Together. The Keene State College Athletic Department and the Owls Media Network would like to take a minute to thank our community partners. Bulldog Design, get it local, get it Bulldog. CNW Services, an industry leader in facility service capabilities. Engelberg Construction, we build relationships for life, celebrating over 50 years of service. The offices of Eli Fire at Edward Jones. Keene Auto Body, your collision specialist since 1928. The Melanson Company, commercial and residential roofing since 1932, and the New Hampshire Army National Guard. Visit nationalguard.com slash nh. Now let's get back to the game. Right now the score going into the second half of this game is 4-3, to three, Owls up by 1. It's been a pretty close game. Radijak and Poto will meet for the draw. And it's picked up by the Wolves. And the wolves are just passing around trying to find the game plan. Oh! And she was knocked to the ground. Looks like the owls are going to get the foul for that one. And number two, Vicky Gracie, will get possession of the ball. Oh, she doesn't get a free position shot. It's like that's a goal for the Wolves. That was number 23, Isabella Poda. That makes the score 4-4. Four to four. Western Connecticut goals for my number 23, Isabella Poda. And we're going to meet back for the draw control. It'll be Radijak and Poda. A familiar pair. Literally, they've been together all game. I mean, like you've said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The ball's up. And that's picked up by St. Marie. Pass to Smith. Looks like the Owls are looking for an opening here, but can't seem to find it. The shot clock is going down. We saw this in the last half. Uh, they kind of have been waiting until like it gets to 10 seconds. Twenty seconds left. Oh 
Ten seconds left on the shot clock. We're getting down to five seconds left on the shot clock here. That looks like another goal for Haley Radijak. The assist from Chase Gengrass. That's that's a great combo. And that puts the uh, Owls up by one, making the score five to four. Radajak and Coda at the draw. The ball's up. And picked up by St. Marie. Ooh, knocked out by an owl or a wolf, but It's picked up. Oh, no, it's not. So it's like we're going back and forth down here. Ball is still on the ground. Uh, oh. Oh! And it's... All right. Now... I think there's... Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> oh, there's going to be some... Oh, shit. Oh. And the owls get possession. And Brown makes her way down. Gendras lost it down there. Picked up by Faye John. And the Wolves probably just looking to tie up the game right now. Passing it around, going slow. That was a shot attempt by Ratchford. That's some good defense. Mm. Ratchford will get a free position shot. And that'll be scores. a goal for the Wolves. Time the game up five to five. Well, it looks like the wolves are going to send number two, Vicky Gracie, to the draw. Oh, we got a little switch with Radijak. This is new. It's like Radijak would pick that one up. Yeah, I was just trying to find a play. That's and a goal. 
for Tess Brown. And that puts him in the lead, six to five. And this is her first goal of the game. Yep. She's been quiet the first half. Offensively, defensively, she's been amazing. That's TB12. Looks like it'll be Gracie and Radajack at the draw again. So we'll get possession. Oh, I'm not really sure what happened there, but we'll still get possession. like Brown will get a penalty. It's the first penalty call of the game. It is. That was shot by number 10, Faye John. She just went right over the net there. And a whistle's blown. Like that call will give the Wolves a free shot. Oh, that was number 23, Isabella Poda, tying up the game six to six. It is intense. Yes, it is. Getting nervous. and Rada Jack will meet for the draw. by Brown. She makes her way down the field. Oh, and a pass meant for Smith.
like that was shot by Coda, but saved by the set. Wolves are just passing it around. That's a goal for number 33, Alexa Riggio from the Wolves. Making the score 7-6. Western Hattie Kate Goals for number 33, Alexa Riggio. Looks like the Owls will call a timeout. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCA student athlete, and I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team on my campus and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. Welcome back to the Owls Media Network. Your score going to the timeout, Wolves 7, Owls 6. Radajak and Poda will meet for the draw. Ball is up. So it's going to be picked up by Brown. Picked up by the wolves.
Alice possession. like the ground ball we picked up by the wolves. Picked up by Brown. Looks like she attempted a long pass and did not work out. The Wolves are going to pick that one up. left in the period. That's going to be another goal for the Wolves. Looks like number 10, Faye Judge. Putting the Wolves up by two. They gain the score 8-6. to six. Less than a minute left in this period. Rada, Jack, and Poto will meet for the draw. And picked up by the Wolves. Looks like Gangrass will pick up that ground ball. Less than 30 seconds here in the third quarter. Ooh. But it was his blown, so the Owls get possession. Looks like Gangrass gonna look to shoot here. Ooh. That's a great shot. And that puts Here's us into the fourth quarter. Your score at the end of the third quarter, Owls 6, Wolves 8. 
stay tuned on the Owl Media Network. NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place. With live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions. With exclusive access. Turn this music on. We still dance. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of freaking out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by home. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Welcome back to the final quarter of this Winners Across matchup. The score going in is Owl 6, Wolves 8. It has been a great matchup so far. We've seen a lot of great <laughs> defense for both teams. Radajack and Poto will meet for the draw. And it's picked, oh, picked up by St. Marie. Oh, no, never <laughs> mind. Never mind. Oh, no, it is. Picked up by St. Marie. There was a foul called on the wolf, so St. Marie gained possession of the ball. The owls are just passing it around. <laughs> so it's going to be picked up by the Wolves goalie, Bresnahan. Also just passing it. Looks like the Wolves are having a hard time finding an opening. Due to the great defense of the Owls.
That was a close one there. But like, it just stopped short of the goal. That's got to be like Where's the something. Where's the penalty call on that one? There's no penalty call? Be for real. really looking to make something happen here. Oh. I mean, this is where they do best when there's very little time on the shot clock. 15 seconds left. It's like maybe St. Marie lost the ball there. It's going to be picked up by Phelps. About five seconds left. That's going to be a goal for Haley Radajak. Making the score eight to seven, and she shot that one with three seconds left on the shot clock. Mm -hmm. Keep state goals for my number five, Haley Jack and Poda at the draw. And picked up by Poda. Looks like the wolves are moving quickly down here. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Twenty seconds left in the shot clock. Ooh. Looks like we're gonna get a foul call on that one. Would have been a great save for Bissett there. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a free position shot for Isabella Poda from the Wolves. And that'll be a goal for Poda. Making the score 9-7, to seven, putting the Wolves up by 2. Mm
Rata, Jack, and Poto will meet again for the draw. And picked up by St. Marie. was going to take a shot there. Oh! And a whistle, yeah, whistle's called. And Wolf still had possession of the ball. Wolves are just passing around, setting themselves up for a play. Picked up by Philides. She makes her way down the field. Ooh. And it's going to be Westcon ball. I feel like she ran into her, but... That's out of bounds on Westcon. Oh! I don't know if the turf is slippery, but everyone keeps falling. Must be all that rain we got up here. You know what? I didn't even think about it. You're probably right. <laughs> And a whistle's blown. And a timeout is called. Stay tuned on the Owl Media Network. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity. One to be seized built upon and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. to national championships runs through NCAA.com and whether you follow one college team 
or all of them. It's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. And welcome back to the matchup of the Keen State Owls versus the Western Connecticut Wolves. Right now the score is 9-7, West Con in the lead. I'll start this period with Wolves' possession. That's going to be a goal for Western Connecticut number nine, Madison Ratchford. Giving them a three point lead, making the score 10 to 7. I believe that's Ratchford's second or third goal of the day. I think you are correct. And we're going to meet up for the draw control. Rattajack and Quota. It falls up. It's going to be picked up by Brown. TB12. Marie picks up the ball. Cal was trying to get a shot off. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. I mean, we've seen it this game. This is where they thrive when there's very few seconds on the shot clock. It's like Radajak found Brown, but just picked up by Bresnahan. Mm -hmm. Great save by Bissette. Beautiful. That's another Western Connecticut goal.
I believe that was number one, Savannah Com. Making the score 7 to 11, giving Wisconsin a four point lead. Keene State will take a timeout and we'll be right back. Our campus can be pretty quiet during the summer, but we're still here to show you what your life at Keene State will be like. I'm Emma, a tour guide in the admissions office, and I'm here to answer your questions and show you the parts of our community you're interested in seeing most. You can book a tour at keene.edu slash visit or reach out to any of our admissions staff to find out when you can come see our home. Here's a sneak peek at what a tour is like. And welcome back to the Owls Media Network. There's a little more than three minutes left in the game between Keene State and Western Connecticut. Right now the score is 11-7 to with Westcon in the lead. Radajak and Poto will meet for the draw. And picked up by St. Marie. That was a beautiful catch. something happen here. And well, that was shot by Brown, but <coughs> blocked by the Wolves' defense. The Owls pick up the ground ball. They'll have another go at it. And knocked out of Ken Grass's stick and picked up by the Wolves. 22, Natalie Maza bringing it down now. And it's out of bounds on the Wolves, so Owls get possession of the ball. Like Gengras, no, she's gonna pass to St. Marie. St. Marie's gonna shoot it, and that's gonna be a goal for number nine, Lindy St. Marie. Making the score nine to twelve, seven to twelve, eight to twelve, eight to eleven. Yeah. 
it'll be Radajak and Poda at the draw with just over a minute left in this game. And picked up by West Con. And that'll be Young bringing it down the field. We have less than a minute left here in this game now. And it looks like the Wolves are just going to run the clock for the last 30 seconds here. Twenty seconds left. <coughs> and the final score, the West Con Wolves eleven, the King Say Owls eight. We'll be right back with Coach Travis Wyant after this. writing in the second grade that I wanted to be a teacher and I always knew that I was going to be a teacher. I started school a year early and it created challenges for me because I wasn't able to pick up material as fast as the other students. Outside of school, my Jaju would quiz me on my math facts and read with me. It showed me that even though I had challenges in school, there were still people who wanted to help me. In high school, I knew I had to work harder than everyone else to get the same results, but I had teachers that would help me in subject areas outside of their own because they could relate to how I felt. The way these interactions with my Jaju and my teachers made me feel while I was learning is the inspiration for how I'd like my students to feel. I'm able to build relationships and be vulnerable with my students when they're struggling because I've been in their shoes and I know exactly how they feel. Being able to relate to them from my own experience has become a massive asset in becoming a teacher. Inside Owl Athletics Top Plays of the Semester for Fall 2023. I'm Reed Rampanelli. At number 10, a buzzer beating three from women's basketball, Keene State facing Division I Dartmouth College on November 14th when Ariana Murray takes the inbound pass and nails the three ahead of a horn to send KSC into the break down by eight. At number nine, a beautiful free kick from men's soccer. Owls on the road against Eastern Connecticut State when Jacksonopoly bends in a perfect free kick to give KSC a 2-1 win. Great shot there, Sinopoli. He's happy about that one onto the track. Whole team coming up to the booth. Owls up 2-1 now. At number eight, a long distance goal from women's soccer. Dean State hosting Eastern Connecticut State. And down 1-0 when Captain Alexis Swinnick unleashes a rocket off the underside of the bar to tie the score. At number seven, a moment of individual brilliance from Marini Stefanakos facing Plymouth State in the LEC semifinals. When Stefanakos races down the field and sweeps the ball into the cage for the go-ahead marker with just five minutes left to send the Owls to the final. At number six, the season of freshman golfer Sean Bono. The rookie shot 76 and 74 over two rounds at the LEC championships earning the conference's Rookie of the Year honor as top finishing freshman. It's the second year in a row KSC had the best finishing rookie in the conference. 
At number five, a dramatic goal for men's soccer. Time running down in the scoreless game against Southern Maine when junior Demir Hamzic rises to head in a corner kick with five seconds to go to give the Owls a win. KSC would go on to be the number two seed in the LEC tournament. At number four, a milestone for Keene State Volleyball senior Reagan Fleming. Owls facing Curry College on October 24th when Fleming gets the dig she needed to become the 16th player in school history to reach the 1,000 dig mark for her career. Oh, off the face of Fran and out of play, and there you have it. A thousand career digs for Reagan Fleming as she becomes the 16th member all time in Keene State Volleyball history. At number three, more milestones, this time for men's basketball. In the season opener against Western New England, fifth year center Jeff Hunter became the third player in school history to grab a thousand rebounds, while junior guard Octavia Brito became the 39th player in KSC history to score a thousand points. At number two, Keene State women's cross country repeating as Little East Conference champions. The Owls placed three runners in the top ten to easily win their second consecutive conference a championship and 20th overall. And at number one, the season of senior Maggie St. John. She was second overall at the LEC championships and 14th overall at the NCAA regional race, which was enough to qualify her for the full NCAA Division III championships. The first KC runner to do so since 2015. That's it for the top plays of the semester. I'm Reed Rampanelli. We'll be back in spring 2024 with more top plays. Happy holidays. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Hello and welcome back to the Owls Media Network. I'm Gina Nunziata here with Coach Travis Wyant after the Owls 8-11 to loss to Western Connecticut State. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, so obviously since WestCon is in the conference, you guys are likely to see them in another matchup, maybe during conference play. So what is something that you'll be better prepared for next time? Um, I'm going to keep that close to the chest. Uh, I don't want the, them to have any ideas if they tend to, you know, pop into this and watch this. But for us, it's a, it's a lot of, um, you know, once we get the familiar, I can never say this word, but once we get an understanding of our opponent, it, it really does help come playoff time. And it does help when we start making preparations for um, meeting those opponents again and kind of developing our own ideas. So, yeah, there's going to be some things we'll work on if we, if we meet them again, but uh, we definitely want to keep that a little close to the chest. Okay, well, that kind of brings me right into my next question, um, asking, like, after this game, is there anything you're going to work on in practice, like maybe just an overview, nothing too specific? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of the stuff we worked on practice and preparation for this game really kind of paid dividends um, in this matchup. We have a lot of games going forward. So in this week, we have two games back to back Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we have a Saturday game against Plymouth. Um, so it's almost like we're just kind of going to build familiarity with ourselves um, throughout the week. We're going to work on, you know, actual gameplay. We're going to put in some um, different systems and stuff like that against our different opponents and just kind of see uh, if we can kind of build off of a, a little mid-season um, rush right here. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, can you identify an area that you're, you feel that your team performed really well in today? Yeah, I think the defense was um, 
very good. I know uh, we uh, came out here with a little bit of a different defensive look than we normally do. Um, so for them to kind of implement that relatively quickly um, and come out in such a way that was um, high pressure and very good. Um, so I, I just wanted to give them a shout out because that was something that, you know, we rely on some some different key pieces defensively um, and to change that all up and, and kind of come out with something completely different against a high level opponent um, is really good. So they did a good job of coming through practice, listening to coach Brown and um, she was in her ear in their ears throughout the week. So they did a really good job of implementing that today for sure. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And we'll be right back on Owls Media Network. We know you will find your community along Appian Way here at Keene State College, over a campfire on the student center lawn, in some friendly games and competition, or in a club you connect to at the student involvement fair. Maybe you will find your people on the courts, in a cheering section in the stands, at the rink on the ice, skating as an owl, or chilling in the yoga studio. Your connections may take place on the quad, listening to music, hanging out with friends, participating in a Keene State tradition like Pumpkin Palooza, or working on a group project, studying with classmates. Maybe your talents will bring you together with your community on one of our stages, in the main theater, or the Recital Hall at the Redfern Arts Center. For us, community is all about the people you meet and the connections you make. At Keene State, our community is really about you. Thank you for tuning in to the OWL Media Network. Next time you want to see the girls black team in action, it's away at Vermont State Castleton and home April 17th, Fitchburg State. Thank you for tuning in. State Athletics broadcast on the Owls Media Network. Please tune in to our next broadcast and thank you for watching.